Welcome to another of my little Pixink type tutorials. This time we're going to have a look at the new image calibration script in Pixinsight. Calibration has been possible in Pixinsight for some time now, but was not the friendliest affair. Fear not though, life is a lot easier with the new script. You can find the script up here under batch processing or in your process explorer under scripts. I've already added it to my favourites. Double click to start. As you can see it's well laid out and I promise you simple to use. I'm going to do a basic calibration to start with with some luminance frames from a mono camera and then look at some alternatives afterwards. If you have carefully made sure your FITS headers or file name contains the correct information i.e. lights, darks, flats and bias you can use the add files which will then automatically insert them into the correct place. But to start with, I'm going to add them manually. So, add bias. Look for my bias frame. As you can see here, I've selected the master bias that I've created earlier. But if you do not have one, just insert all of your subs and select a sigma setting for pixel rejection. Default works most of the time. Next, add me dark and again I have a master frame and next my flat and again I have a master flat. These masters have been created by a previous run and were saved because the export calibration files box was checked but as I said earlier if you don't have any masters created just input all your subs and the script will create a master for you. Now before we go any further, as I am using masters for my bias starts and flats, I used to tell the script that I am doing so. As you can see, we've now got a blue star indicating that they are masters. Now to add my lights. Select away in the normal fashion. Now as the script also registers the calibrated frames, we need to select a reference image. And we just double click on one to automatically input it into the reference box. Or use the drop down menu if you need to select an external file. And of course, an output directory where all the newly registered and calibrated files will be saved. Now by default, the optimized dark frames box is checked but I have found with my quiet camera or a Sony chipped camera occasionally it can cause me problems so me personally I like not to optimize my dark frames but it may be advantageous for you to leave it at the default here we have the method that picks into outputs its files auto is okay but perhaps you consider bicubic spline if you get any introduced image artifacts which occasionally happens, but we'll leave it auto. You never normally have to touch the clamping threshold, so we'll leave that at default. You can, if desired, integrate your calibrated images, but advise you see this as a rough work in progress, as usually fine tuning of these settings is needed, and I use image integration afterwards to get my final working image. But we'll just check the parameters. Basically, you can select your method your pixel rejection and your sigma. I usually like a little bit higher but again this is just really to give you what I would recommend as a rough working image. To check the script is happy with my selected files click on the diagnostics box and I'm pleased to say it's OK. We now have everything correctly selected and it's time to run the script which can take a few minutes so I have run it previously so we'll just fast forward and imagine that I've just completed a run of the script now you will notice with scripts that you cannot do anything else in the Pixin desktop so to look at these newly created files you will need to close the script and as I might need to rerun it I want to save the settings and you can do this by creating a new instance just drag the triangle to the desktop as normal. Now we can exit the script 
Yep. And let's have a look at our files. And you can see they've all been nicely saved, and as it clearly states, calibrated frames, registered frames, but the masters are where your newly created masters will be stored. Obviously, as I've already used a um, master bias, master flat, and a master dark, there's none in here, only the newly created integrated light frame. A quick look at that. We can inspect as usual with the stream transfer function. These are showing the rejected pixels. But as I said earlier, I treat this personally as a work in progress. And here's the finally integrated frame. I can assure you this image is correctly calibrated. The rest of the illumination errors are down to my equipment and imaging conditions. You might also be able to see what a fine tuning is required. As there is a satellite trail down here that's not been rejected and other hot pixels. I would personally run the image integration module on its own with the newly created registered files. But it does give you a heads up that everything's okay. Close that down. We can do other things with this script and one that I use all the time is a defect map or as it's called in PixInsight cosmetic correction. And we need to use a module for this. I of course install this in my favourites and let's launch it. Now we need to define the information that the script will use from this module and to do this I will use a master dark to select my hot warm stroke cold pixels. Let's get a master dark. There we go. And we need to enable the hot pixels and the cold pixels. And to help with the rest of the settings I'm going to load an uncalibrated light frame. And supply screen transfer function. And I'm going to define a preview using Alt N. Just on a small area so I can get a closer view of my hot and cold pixels. Select the preview. Then we use the real time preview box down here. And hopefully you can see the hot and warm pixels on my image. And to remove these, we'll lower the hot pixels threshold. Sliding to the left. Hopefully, you can see them disappearing. Now, I know from previous experience, I've got about 18 or 19,000 of these with my camera. Not quite as bad as it sounds, as are 11 million pixels. Also, I'm fairly lucky, I have a whole one cold pixel. So I'm happy with these settings. Let's close down these images. They've done their job. You can also use the auto detect, which works very well, but faster and personally think better results can be achieved using the method above. Further defects can be removed using the defect list, but this is beyond this tutorial unfortunately. When you know your settings, we need to save them as a process icon. Just like this, drag to the desktop and it's the information in this process icon that the calibration script will use. And of course, you can save this process icon and reuse it at any future time. One off setting per sub length, i.e. this was a 10 minute sub, you might have to have one for a 5 minute sub, blah blah blah. Shut it down, we finish with that. Time to relaunch the script. And press the global button to confirm. Let's get back to the lights and you can see the cosmetic correction box here. Tick apply and select the temper icon that we've just created. Now the script is ready to run again and the defect map or cosmetic correction is applied automatically. Shan't do so in this case, just wanted to show how it was done. Now what else does the script have to offer? Now if we select the CFA or colour filter array the debayer option 
is now activated, giving you four options to match your camera. I suggest you play the debayer module externally to the script to discover the correct settings to use. Okay, and the debayer method by default is very good. Now these are not one shot images, I don't need to use that. Another thing I do a lot of the time is not use a dark at all, I just use the master bias in its place. So what happens if I remove the master dark and I run the diagnostics? It's warning me that I have no dark frame selected, which is quite correct. If I choose to ignore this warning and continue, the script will use the master bias that, um, that I have selected over here. And will calibrate my images with said bias. You don't have to install another bias frame in the dark box. Now also you might like this. Let's reset the script. Clear all the files. Set all parameters. Okay, I'm going to use the add files to select all my bias, masters, lights, flats, all in one go. It's automatically put the bias in the bias box, darks in the dark box, and then when we look at the flats of course it's put the flats in the flat box but more importantly the script to recognize these images are from different sets i.e. green, blue and red but it could just as easily have been an Araband set again I've used masters here but you just could have loaded all your subs up if you so desired do not forget if you've selected masters make sure the script knows also if we look in the lights it's loaded up all the subs into separate subcategories blue, green and red down below. Pix Insight will only do this if the correct information is in the FITS header and or in the file name. Usually this is done automatically by your capture software. Now when we run the skip this time it will create individual sets of red, green and blue image files in one run. A great time saver. You don't have to do individual runs for your sets of green filters, blue filters, sets of red filters. Very clever and a great time saver. I won't do the rest of the settings as you now know how to do that. I just wanted to show you this very clever feature of the script. Lastly, there is the Add Custom, which you can use if you're having problems getting the script to see the image files as you would like. You can use it effectively to rename any of the files that you've selected as a bias frame, a dark frame, a light frame so the script can recognize them as you would want it to. Well, that's all there is to it. I hope that's of help to you. Have fun, and see you again soon. Bye.